All right, so you're welcome back to New Day here on TV3, and uh, we're going to be doing Chamber, and on the topic for discussion today, we're going to be talking about warranty and how it uh, protects consumers from the everyday language of um, goods sold are non-refundable or non-returnable, I beg your pardon. And uh, my guest is Clara Berry Casati. She's a legal practitioner and managing partner at Casa Law Firm. Good to have you in the studio. Good to be here. That's and uh, we've been having quite a chit chat before the start of the show. Um, so last week um, we're talking about warranty. Now, beside yes. implied warranty, what other warranty do we have? We have the express warranty. The express warranty is an agreement or the express statements from the seller or the manufacturer of the product um, giving conditions and circumstances under which they would repair or replace the goods. That one is an express warranty. We are talking about express opinion, uh, statements of facts and, uh, and other issues. Uh, last week you talked about uh, some warranties guaranteed under law yes. so that we didn't have instances of uh, goods so they're not returnable. Yes, yes. Um, the, we, we have to look at the purpose for the law taking, talking about warranties. If you look at the reason behind um, warranties or having, put having warranties in place, is to protect the consumer against inferior goods. In other words, it is to make the manufacturer responsible for inferior goods or any defects in goods. That means that where there is a defect, it doesn't matter what the, uh, the, the, the manufacturer or the seller says. You cannot get away with it by just saying that goods, sales, goods sold I'm are not returnable. returnable. If there is a material defect in the goods, it doesn't matter what you said. The, the law allows you to take it back within a reasonable time. And then the manufacturer or the seller would have to either repair or replace it de depending on the, on the, on the, um, the effect, the, the damage or the extent of, of the defect. Mm. Another issue is that the law expects that if you are selling anything to somebody else, you have right or title to sell it. So it doesn't matter what you say, if another person contests the title, that is the title in the goods, there is an issue. You cannot get away by saying that, well, all I have done is that I have sold the goods and I have told you that goods sold are not returnable. Under certain circumstances, under the law, it doesn't matter what you say. If you did not have title to sell the goods and that issue comes up, the, the, the buyer can bring the product back and they would, be you, they would be entitled to damages against you for breach of an implied warranty. And in this case, it's a warranty that is implied by a statute that you cannot negotiate away. How long should a warranty last, or is it dependent on the company that issues it? Um, in certain circumstances, it is dependent on the, on the company that issued it. When we are talking about express warranty, because that one is an express statement by the seller or the company, it depends on how long the company has given. Because some companies have written policies and they give a period of time. So in a situation like that, yes, it depends on the, on the producer or the manufacturer or the seller or the company. Where it is an implied warranty, it depends on whether or not it is reasonable time. The law provides for reasonable time, of course, because if you are looking at it, it is difficult to, to, to determine what is reasonable time because goods are different. What would be reasonable time with respect to tomatoes? would not be reasonable time in respect of a car. So what is reasonable time depends on the product in, in each case. And the, the, court, the law would always look at it based on the reasonable man or what generally pertains in the market. Mm. And should, should the warranty be written in expressly in a language that the consumer understands? Advisedly, yes. Uh, the warranty should be written in a language that the consumer understands. That, that should be the case. It is also advisable that um, consumers should ask for the written policies of the products that they purchase, warranties from, the, from the, 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 the company. It is advisable for consumers to take the warranty document, to read it, make sure they understand and they agree with it before they, they make any purchases. If they have any concerns, then they raise them with the, with the company and then see what other allowances the company, the company can give. Okay, so assuming you bought a product uh, which had a warranty of six months, yes. and within two months you noticed that you didn't like it and so you wanted to return it, even though it's within the allowable period of six months, can you return it? W with respect to an express warranty, it stipulates when you can return 
the, the product. Usually it doesn't include because you don't like it. Okay. You could return it because there is a defect or because maybe something is broken that needs to be repaired. But if it is an issue of that you just have changed your mind and you no longer like the product, unless that is expressly written into the warranty agreement, no, you cannot. Mm. Yes. And if you purchase a product and you realize that it is expired or defective after the warranty period, can you still return it? It depends on uh, when, what, if it was expired before you even bought it, then yes, you, you can return it. But if it was expired after, at the time you bought it, it hadn't expired, but you had kept it and then it expired whilst it was in your possession. Unless it is provided for in the warranty agreement, you cannot in that event return, return the product because uh, um, it was, you, at the time you purchased it, it hadn't, it hadn't expired. And unless, if, unless it is a, a product that if you look at the lifespan involved, for example, if it is consumables, it is reasonable, the, the seller can reasonably expect that you would have consumed it. Let's say you bought it a month ago, but you did not consume it. When you bought it a month ago, it had not expired. You didn't consume it, for, so by the time that you intended to consume it, you now realize it has expired. In a situation like that, you cannot exactly put blame on the company unless it is expressly stated in the warranty agreement. That's pretty much interesting, you yes. know. So, if have you and I took it home, I agreed. I took it home and later I realized I didn't like it. Can I return it? In a situation like that, it depends. It depends on whether or not it is part of the express agreement. If it is part of the express agreement, yes, you can return it. If it is not part Just of the... Just by the fact that I had been taken through the details. Yes. Okay. But what I mean is that if the details include that if you don't like it, you can bring it back. Okay. In that event, okay. yes, you can bring it back. And you don't have that most that case mostly in this part of our world? Generally, we, we don't. Mm -hmm. I think uh, generally uh, a, a, a lot of our citizens don't even read the warranty agreements. Mm -hmm. a, lot of it, a lot of them may even see defects in goods or may just complain and not return it. We haven't had a lot of suits, unlike other uh, countries, right. where people want to exercise um, uh, their warranties uh, and, and all of that unless we are saying that probably usually they've been a couple agreements between the consumers and the companies because most of the companies have their own um, dispute resolution mechanisms which is that if you buy a product and there's a problem with it you come and see them they have their own um, mechanism that you can trigger it's possible that the consumers have been able to trigger that kind of process and then between them they have resolved the issue without the need the need to go and, to and as a buyer do you have the right to see the warranty before you purchase you do you have the right to see the warranty before you you, you purchase understandably there are those um, companies that argue that bec maybe the warranty is already sealed in the product and they don't want to break the seal but even in that circumstance the company should already have a copy of the warranty displayed somewhere that they can give to the consumer to read and then talk up, ask any questions if they want to. The, the, the consumer should be entitled to see their rights and obligations with respect to the product that they have bought. Mm. Maybe finally, as we wrap up, there are fears that you know warranties have become like insurance, yes. uh, where you get less uh, than you put in. Yes. Is it so? To some extent, it depends on the kind of warranty that we have. If we are having an extended warranty, an extended warranty basically is that after the warranty policy has expired you enter into a contract either with a company or a third party to the and pay a premium to the uh, to, to the effect that if this the product gets damaged under certain circumstances mm -hmm. it would be repaired under that extended warranty that means that the time for the primary warranty has expired so this is a different timeline that kind of warranty is like an insurance because you do pay um, premiums on it like an insurance document, it will stipulate the circumstances under which it would be repaired. Like an insurance policy, if the, one of those incidences occur, the seller would not be the one to bear the cost of, of, of the repairs. It will be the companies that they have, the, they are more or less like a beneficiary under a policy. So it will be the company that would repair or pay for the repairs. So that, that kind of extended warranty mm. is like an insurance policy, more or less. But the primary warranty is not 
All it's right. not an insurance. Okay, thank you very much, Clara. Yeah. That's how we wrap up here on Chamber. Uh, my guest has been Clara Berry Kasatia. I hope I got the, the, the name right. Yes. Berry. Yes. You okay, have. Clara Berry Kasati. Uh, she's a legal practitioner and managing partner of Casa Law Firm.